That's a very good perspective. I mean, disruptive innovation has been, I think, around as long as mankind has been around. I mean, look at fire, look at the wheel massive disruptive events that were engineered by human ingenuity and and I don't think that's actually changing I mean if you look at the aviation industry it, it's just within almost living memory now that that travel became possible to huge rafts of the population and if you look at what's going to happen in the next 15 years from Asia alone there'll be something like 1.7 billion extra travelers every year that aren't even traveling at the moment. So it's a very good point. How do we keep ahead of the game? And I think the difficulty at the moment, particularly in the airport space, if we continue to do what we're doing just on a bigger scale, travel is going to become very, very difficult and very unpleasant. So we are completely reinventing the wheel with technology. Uh, because there's two ways to improve, I think, the flow through a facility. One is to make the facility bigger, which is expensive. Or secondly, to speed people through the process, which is far less expensive. So we're investing a lot in technology that will actually take away a lot of the processes that people um, go through now. I mean, the fact that we have to carry around paper documents for visas and passports and tickets at the moment is quite ridiculous when we've got a complete biometric footprint that is actually unique to each of us and technology exists to read that biometric footprint and use it for a passport, use it for a customs clearance, use it for a, a ticket, use it for all sorts of formalities and at the moment all of those formalities we have to go through as individual processes and if you look at airport security clearly especially in these troubled times we need to continue to innovate because no one likes the disruptive nature of airport security or processes. You know, there's only two places on the planet that you queue and that is really at the moment at the post office and at the airports and I'd like to hand the monopoly on queuing back to the post office and eliminate all the queues from the airport. You know, and I think the last point that are on this particular subject is actually innovation is no longer the preserve of the scientists, it's no longer the preserve of the lab. And the most amazing statistic to me is that in 1969 when man walked on the moon, the innovation that got the NASA space program there was driven by a computer that um, now in our pocket with my iPhone here, my iPhone 6, if you guess how much time the computing power sits in my pocket today, it's a phenomenal figure. It is 120 million times more powerful and faster than the Apollo guidance computer that got astronauts to the moon. So the pace of innovation is changing. The only difference now, it's, it's actually with us and it will affect our daily lives far faster than ever before. Thank you.